Uh, you've morning. been here before, have you? Yeah, yeah, I've been two weeks ago. Yeah. Your name is? Sergei. Sergei. Yeah. I'm from Russia. I see. Yeah. No problem with the English language? Uh, no, I'm, I think I'm fine. But if I will not understand, I will try ask to repeat, okay? Okay, okay. So, you have been here. How long were you here last time you were here? Uh, two, two days. Two days. Two days. I see. And yeah. I before I I also was before that. Before though, that, I yeah. See. So you know what I talk about. Yeah. So. Any comments? Any questions? Uh, I have a feeling that I um, want to share and maybe please some. So uh, <coughs> things what you tell and uh, your philosophy or ideas. I don't know how to say it. I feel. Oh. I feel that it is truth. I have a deep feeling that it is truth. And uh, all this last year, which I, w I was... Uh, what, what do you do in this year? Your occupation, so business or occupation? I have business. I, I have yeah, uh, I I yeah. a small company. Uh -huh. um, so all this year, I have this feeling that uh, things what you are talking about is uh, really truth. That, that's I my see, feeling I from see. inside. And um, I feel also that... Why do you say that? Why do I say that? Yes. I mean, is it your experience in life? I, that I you have a I have, uh, few moments of experience of this uh, being like part of, of everything, like I've being nothing, just part of everything. I've but I've lost this feeling. So many times I had it, many times I lost. And uh, now I, um, I have kind of, um, so I, th I feel that from my heart, I want to, uh, how to say, to give up. Yeah, so I want this come to my life, this feeling. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel that uh, I don't have any control on uh, anything, yeah. on uh, my mind, which just keeps yeah. mm -hmm. thinking. I don't have control on my awareness. Something happens and I'm losing it. Yeah. just the next moment and then I found myself that I was out for some period yeah. so I feel helpless you know uh, inside so at the same time I want to no, I'd like to with this understanding and this experience how do you live your life now how do I live my life now yeah how do you live your life now uh, living life means dealing with the situation isn't it yeah Living my life means dealing with the situation yeah. at the moment. That is one situation after another. I deal with one another situation. That is daily living. Yeah. So how do you deal with situations as they arise? Uh, I try to give up to no, the not situation. Try. I mean, how do you, how do you I deal? In, in, in living life, you don't try. You do something. I do. No <laughs> I do what I do think what is good to do. You are facing a situation. Facing a situation means you decide in that situation what do you want. <coughs> if I sorry. and in that uh, life, daily life means yeah. everybody has to face a situation. Yeah. Facing a situation means in that situation you decide what you want in that situation. Yeah. And you do whatever you feel you should do yeah. in order to get what you want. And you do it. That is daily living. Isn't that right? Yeah, it is. One situation after another. In each situation, you decide what you want and you do whatever you feel you should do. And you do it. Yeah. That is daily living. So in doing that, how has this understanding affected you? How this understanding affected me? Yeah. What did you do before and what are you doing now? Uh, it's more difficult, I would say, for me. So now, what do you do? What do I do now? In a given situation, Sergio. I do the same. I, I do whatever I want to do. But life, I, I feel that life becomes bit the same time a bit more easy because I don't think about tomorrow I try uh, that is why why do you not think about tomorrow uh, yeah why do you not 
change about tomorrow. Because I, I, I have a, a experience that it's useless because uh, tomorrow will come and uh, it will be anyway something different which I think. So um, I think in certain way, of course, because I have business, I have to plan things. Therefore, you have to plan. Yeah, that's, that's Therefore, true. Therefore, planning for tomorrow yeah. is still something you do now. Yeah, still. But thinking about tomorrow, what will happen tomorrow, you're not doing anything now. Doing something now, planning for the future, or whatever you do now, is what I call the working mind. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do now, what you do now may have something to do with the past. What you are doing now may have something to do with the future, but you are doing it now. Therefore, that is your working mind, working in the present moment. But when you think of the past, and make some regrets about the past, or you think of the future, and you worry about the future. That is the, not the working mind, it is the thinking mind, which is useless. Yeah. That is my point. Therefore, two are making two separate things. So now if you agree that this is the future, that anything can happen, there is no point, unless it is planning in the present moment. So what you are saying is, now you don't care so much what might be happen in the future, and you concentrate on your work in the present moment. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Which is a good thing. But no, you have just done whatever you felt like doing. But your experience all along has been. The result of your action has never been in your control. Isn't that right? Correct. Sometimes you have got <coughs> what you want. Sometimes you have not got what you want. What is to happen, you cannot know. Exactly. And yet, when you do something, you have to decide. If I do this, that is likely to happen. If I do that, this is likely to happen. And then you have to make up your mind. See what I mean? Yeah. Therefore, in deciding what to do, you have to take into account the possibility of what means the result of the alternatives that you do. You see what I mean? Yeah. When you have to do something, you have two or three alternatives. How do you decide between the alternatives? You have to think. If I do this, that is likely to happen. If I do the other, something else is likely yeah. to happen. And between the two, what, is, what can happen, you decide what to do. You consider two or three alternatives and then you decide. Yeah, but this is the most difficult moment to decide uh, because I think about the result, but it's not in my control. No, but. That is why, although you know that the result is not in your control, if you have three alternatives <laughs> or four alternatives, you can do A, B, C or D. In doing something now, you have to decide. Yeah, and this is the problem. A problem. That <laughs> problem is everybody's problem. Yeah. <laughs> so you not just so you. So what do you do? You bring it down to two, two alternatives. Then what happens? You can't make up your mind. <laughs> Which one? A or B? A or B? Then what does surgery do? He has to make a decision. What does surgery do now? Now, now I'm confused. <laughs> because <laughs> before but, but you still have done something. Yeah, I still have to do. <laughs> Last time this has happened, what did you do, sir? Last time? Yes. Last time this happened. I dropped a coin. I'm sorry? I dropped a coin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What else can anyone do? <laughs> so if I can't make up my mind. Yeah, I just dropped a coin. Yeah, just that's, that's, a how coin. I, that's how I usually do. What's wrong with it? Then what else can you do? I don't know. But now I drop the coin just when I have so a no problem. Yeah. No problem. What do I do? I drop the coin. No problem. Yeah. In any case, what is going to happen has never been in your control. 
what are the changes that have been happening? I mean that coin because I have really deep feelings that I'm not a decision maker. I, 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 I nothing is. No, wait a minute. No, you are not the decision maker. You are I the am, decision maker. But at the maker. same time, I am. But the result is not in your control. Now the point is, whether you are a decision maker or you are not a decision maker, is part of your programming, yeah. genes and conditions. Yeah. Yeah. Genes and conditions. <laughs> so on that depends a whole lot of things. You are a decision maker or you are not a decision maker. Two, you deal with a problem and even then the decision is to be made. Now, my point is, whether you are a decision maker or not a decision maker, even that is truly not in your control. That is part of your genes and conditioning. Most people sometimes can do it, sometimes cannot do it. Some people can always do it. Their decision may be wrong, but they still are able to make a decision. And some are just not able to make a decision. So in your case, some in the middle, what you are saying is, if you can make a decision, you make a decision. And if you can't make a decision, you can say, that's all anybody can do. But at that way, Wanting to be that, uh, feeling sorry for yourself, that you are not a decision maker, you would like to make a decision maker, it's just a waste of time. Mm -hmm. It's just a waste My son, who used to be the managing director of Russell Pharmaceuticals, a pharmaceutical company, French company owned by, by the German firm, Hex. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was the... He became the managing editor, uh, man managing director. Mm -hmm. So the, the union head, head of the workers' union, you must know that, you are a Russian, so you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So he came and paid a courtesy visit. He paid a courtesy visit. And he said, you know, there's some one or two problems which have been hanging there for the last five or six or more years. One of these days, shall we deal with them? So my son said, why not now? Why not now? That surprised me. So he said, yes, I'll come back in ten minutes. I said, I'll oh, come back in ten minutes. So the man came for ten minutes. And the, and the problem, which was hanging fire, not being able to make a decision by his previous managing director and this union head for more than five or six years, they solved it in half an hour. My <coughs> son was able to make a decision. He, and he he's a very clever fellow. Very uh, educational career was brilliant. Very so what he did, must have did, I, I presume. First, analyze the problem. What happens in many cases, we try to find a solution for the problem. Whereas the problem really is in the problem itself. So what he must have done is analyze the problem. And when you analyze the problem, both sides come into several things which they hadn't known before. Anyway, it was and from then on, the, you normally the opponent, the union, head of the union, is an opponent. From that mo moment on, the head of the staff union became his greatest public, public active man, public relations man. This is a happening which had to happen, according to his luck. But what I'm saying here, that whether I have, you have the problem, that at capacity to make is not in your control. Therefore, you have to live. You have to live with the ability that you have. On the other hand, nothing stops you from improving your ability to make a decision. If they offer you a course, they may give you, they will train you to make, be able to make more decisions. And you feel like doing it, take it. 
because they cost me a few hundred dollars. It's up to you to decide whether you want. If you have the money, you say, why not? I'll go. So you go and take that course, which, is, which promise you to make you a better decision maker. Whether you succeed or not is not in your control. See what I, Therefore, what I'm saying is, if, if you feel at the moment you are not a decision maker, nothing stops you from doing anything you want to do in order to improve your ability to make a decision. So with that code you may or may not say, you may be a better decision maker. So what I'm saying is, I'm not a, and you don't have to pity yourself or accept that you are a, not a decision. You are free to improve yourself in any situation. But having done that, at a particular moment, your ability to make a decision is limited. So you accept it and you make the decision as best as you can. And the result has always been not in your control. So life goes on. See what I mean? I repeat, life goes on. And my important point is, Nothing stops anyone from improving himself in any way, physically, mentally, temperamentally. See what I mean? Yeah. So having the, at any point my ability is limited, I you make use of that ability, do whatever I have done. The result is that I have to accept the result, whatever it is. And I accept it. Life becomes simple. See what happens. So in your case, what happens? Your daily living, has that become simple? Simpler than it used to be? Uh, right now? Over a period, since you had this understanding. Yeah. Had there been a change, Sergio? It should be, but I think I, think I will still miss one uh, point. Because yes, please. Uh, please. Uh, uh, this is a question of my um, being aware of uh, my nature, like, so uh, for me uh, it's a difficult feeling when I'm losing myself into, when I'm losing awareness in being involved into situations, business and whatever. Yeah. So I feel that I'm Wait losing something. You find yourself involved in something. I find it afterwards, <laughs> or maybe during... You know, what you're saying is, you s you realize you have been involved. Yeah. Isn't that what you're saying? Yes. yes. At some point you realize you have been involved. Yeah. It happens to everybody. Sorry? It happens to everybody. Yeah. If there is involvement, at some point there is an aware you are aware that you have been involved. Isn't that right? It is right, but it's still no Wait a minute. Let's go step by step. You say you got involved in something. Yeah. And you, you know that you would, you would rather not have got involved in it, but you have got involved in it. Then what happens, sir? That's in my Then what happens? After I realize that I'm involved? Yes. You realize I'm involved. Then what happens? That is the important part. With me? Yeah. Not somebody else, so you should be. <laughs> then you realize that you have been involved. What happened? Um, I feel only one of two things can happen. Sergi, only one of two things can happen. I've just re I've been involved. Only one of two things can happen. One is, you real, I mean, involved, the involvement stops. Yeah, I'm trying to stop involvement. No. And that is the problem. Yeah, I think, because I'm trying to stop involvement. That is the problem. It causes some uh, conflict in me. Therefore, what I'm saying is, <coughs> once there's awareness that I have been involved, yeah. in my case, that involvement stops. Yeah. And that's the end of that in involvement. That is the end of that involvement. But what happens more often is that the ego gets involved in the involvement. 
I must be involved. I shouldn't have got involved. Yeah, yeah. I often do that. I must not get involved. What should I do not to get involved? That I call involvement in involvement. One of two things. The realization that I've been involved cuts off the involvement and that's it. I go on with it. Or I get involved in the involvement, pity myself, try to think how I can that is involvement in involvement. But now what I've told with that understanding, next time there is an involvement, you are likely to remember what I've just stopped and not get involved in the involvement. In other words, accept that there was an involvement. Accepting that there was an involvement, you realize, the moment you realize there was involvement, it gets cut off. And you are free of that involvement. Unless you keep thinking about that involvement. See what I mean? Therefore, involvements are bound to happen. And my suggestion is accept the involvement has happened. Don't get involved in the involvement, which is a very important point, a very important point. I should not have got involved. I should not have got angry. I should not have been a play. Is an involvement in the involvement. See what I mean? Yeah. So the involvement is bound to happen. The important thing is to accept that involvement. Has happened. The moment you realize it, but at least a good point is that you said at some point you were aware of the involvement. It can be that you are not aware of the involvement and the involvement goes on and on and on and on. That also happens in many cases. Therefore, involvements are bound to happen, let them happen. And if you let them happen and don't get involved in the involvement, at some point of time you will become, start becoming aware of the involvement and then you will be able to stop them. And then, in your daily living, what else happens? Early? With this understanding or whatever? Yeah, with this understanding. Has there been a difference in your daily living? I think there should be now? a peace of mind in this, <coughs> with this understanding. It should be kind of peace. <coughs> this involvement, on the whole, that's what you're saying? This mental stress, are you saying because of the less mental stress? Yeah. When will there be, be less mental stress? According to my concept, when you concentrate more and more on the working mind, dealing with the problem at hand, and not giving a free rein to the thinking mind, the thinking mind has not in the present moment. Thinking mind always dips into the past, projects something in the future, <coughs> and that's the job of the thinking mind, to get you involved. Just stop it by saying myself, I don't know. Yeah, that, that, but more importantly, you'll find it's easier to take on more jobs in the present moment and concentrate on the present moment. So to take more job? Whatever job you have, concentrate on the job. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and if you concentrate on them, you'll find that you'll be doing your job much quicker, much more efficiently. And you'll be still able to take on more jobs and make more money. I presume. I don't know. See what I mean? Therefore, it's the thinking mind and the working mind. It's the thinking mind which gets you involved in the involvement. Is it fair what I mean? Yeah. It's the thinking mind which gets you involved in the involvement. Whereas the understanding is, all right, there was an involvement. The awareness of it makes it. Then the awareness, then you don't have to think about it further. Yes, sir. Yeah. <coughs> so you were asking him what changes have come. Yes. I would like to begin with that and then I would like to ask you my question. Please. Yes. Vishal, yes. So the first time I met you, yeah. I was very upset. And I hated you. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I'm not the only and, one. And let me let me say, sir, I was very upset, sir, and I was very miserable for two days, three days after meeting you. Uh, Why? Because all the pride I had uh. of achievements, uh, you know, it was like now. <laughs> it was like now. Not I don't. I don't. Uh, I I can't enjoy my pride, which I was. And then I think after the third day, I started loving you. Even though I'm not hundred percent loving you, I'm ninety percent loving you. Uh, but ten percent is still there, bro. I mean, very frank. Yeah, of course. Ten percent is there. Because uh, after you took my pride away, you also took my guilt away. That's the whole point. And uh, isn't it? Pride and guilt in mind go together. Go together. Go together. But you know, pride for achievement, guilt for failure. But as a human nature, I'm, I'm always looking for the pleasure first, then the pain. Yeah. So you took my pleasure first, which I realized, and then <laughs> you also took my. How can I take your pleasure away from you? Pleasure means you know I had that pride. Pride. Pride away. So pride, pride means I was I used to get pleasure out of my pride. That's okay. what I'm saying. So I'm saying for you not to not to understand. That pride is not something to take pleasure in. I understand. But pride is something to be ashamed of. I understand. <laughs> I absolutely understand that. And therefore, for three days I was very miserable right. <laughs> after meeting you. Yeah. Uh, so that's the change. Now it's been, I think, eight days, seven, eight days, nine days. Yeah. And I'm coming to terms with certain concepts, which you mentioned, sir. And I'm more comfortable now with both uh, by by dropping both of the things. More comfortable. How do you mean more comfortable, Vishal? How do you mean more comfortable? More comfortable means more that I'm more peaceful. Very more comfortable with yourself. Yes, more peaceful with myself. Yes, that is more comfortable with yourself. Yes, sir. That is the real peace of mind. Yes, sir. So I'm happy I met you, sir. Thank you. Now, sir, coming to the second question, sir. Yes. You know, I've got stuck at loving you at 90%. Yes. That last 10% is very difficult. That is because I'm very skeptic. You know, yeah. I keep my my mind keeps uh, questioning. Very good, very good, Vishal. That's what I tell you. First, listen to me totally. Understand what I'm trying to convey to you. And once you have accepted, you know exactly what I'm trying to convey to you. After that, be as skeptical as you can. So I have been very skeptical, yeah. and I've been very I've been questioning. Yeah. I also, as you said on the first day, do personal investigation. Yeah. I've been doing personal investigation every day. Oh, yeah. In fact, every night. I see. <laughs> and I've been trying to see whether what you've told me. Yeah. I've gone back into my life, and there have been so many instances where I felt that <coughs> yes, maybe I was in control, and then I've investigated deeper, deeper, deeper. And maybe you know you're right that I wasn't in control. Maybe it just happened. But before I met you, I had been reading a lot of scriptures. You know, the Bible, the Quran, yeah. the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. You know, all I could get my hands on. Yeah. And what so, was the result? So now wait after wait, wait, after wait, meeting what, you, sir. Wait a minute. What was the result? Uh, a lot of confusion. Ah, this uh, is trouble. Each day has the set of. Yes, set sir. Of, set of concept. Now that is what I'm coming to, sir. Yeah. Now to um, to do away with the last 10 percent, I'm hoping if because you know I can't convince my intellect. You know, the more I'm trying to convince, the more it's rebelling. But I'm saying no, it's destiny, destiny. See, it says no, 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 no. It's not destiny. There could be a little bit karma. Then again, I have a battle. You know, two two sides of the mind. No, no. I'm I'm hoping yeah. that uh, you could give. Some more examples from scriptures. Yeah. For example, let's take Islam, yeah. the faith of Islam. Yeah. And if we read the Quran, um, and if you if you if we see the Muslims, you realize that a lot of what they do and say is what you say because they start with the will of God. The will of God. Every word yes, for them is the will of God. Wait a minute. So will of God. Pardon me. But will of God. Yes. Yes. But they say. What do they and in practice? What a terrorist! What did the terrorist do? Will of God, which I am supposed to bring about. Therefore, the terrorist plot that I am planning will take me to 
paradise. I am carrying out the will of God. I am carrying out the will of God. That is where they go wrong. But that's not wrong, that's the will of God, no? So, I mean, if somebody is killing, no, that's the will of God. Whatever is happening at the moment could not have happened unless it were. That yes. is the basis. So there is no question about that. Yes. So we should not, even bad things are happening, as we call in legal terms, yeah. the acts of God. Yeah. In legal terms. Yeah. So then we just accept it. Wait a minute. So, so Therefore, so, yes, sir. as I, my very beginning, in any given situation, I am free to do whatever I want in order to get what I want. The, the psychopath is free to do what he wants. <laughs> so, so, so can you give some, some more examples from the scriptures which kind of corroborate to your teachings so that, you know, I, I want to, you know, so I can understand it in a better fashion. I know, but the fact of the matter is, I have not been a student of scriptures. As soon as I found, I'm not joking, as soon as I found, that the formula in the scriptures is, is not in, does not work out in practice. Because when you read Mahavira and Buddha, yeah. they are intellects. But when you read Jesus and Muhammad, yeah. they, are, they, 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 they do more from the heart. Yeah. You know, there, there, there is a very dif big difference between, just as an example I am giving you, yeah. you know, Mahavira and Buddha are more intellects. They, they think more and, you know, more concepts and stuff like that. While, like, while Muhammad was not, educated but still he was able to become a tool you know for God's words so you know that that confusion if you could uh, now, the first most important confusion is the Buddha is totally different from Buddhism absolutely I understand that but you know you don't stop there you go into the, into the details of the Buddhism Buddhism was not started by Buddha, uh, it was started by his followers. Exactly. Uh, a Buddha cannot start a religion, exactly. nor can Jesus Christ start a religion. Exactly. Christianity exactly. started 300 years after the yes. death of Christ. Therefore, what you understand as Buddha's concept may not be Buddha's concept at all. Possible. And that, therefore, I go to be, what did Buddha say about something I'm concerned with? I'm not studying Buddhism. See what I mean? Now, I come to the conclusion that everything that happens in life is a happening according to God's will, God's will law. That's my, based only on scripture, script, my Hindu scriptures say, thou art the doer, thou art the experiencer, thou art the speaker, thou art the listener. Right at the beginning. I think I speak you listen, you speak I listen, but the Hindu, that's not so. It looks like it. But none and neither of us would be able to speak or listen if there was consciousness was not present in these two body-mind organisms. Therefore, it is the impersonal consciousness which does the speaking to one, listening to the, speaking to one, listening to the other. Therefore, the human being cannot be the doer even of a simple act like that. See what I mean? I accept that. Why do I have to go for further concepts? Why do I have to study, study Buddhism? Why do I have to speak see, Hinduism? And is this intellectual understanding or is it just... It's intellectual understanding. It's not enough to, to but, have intellectual understanding. But which has been supported by my experience. So you have your... In the, my, and, you, and your experience also. Yeah, intellectual understanding that, and even an experience that. So but therefore, you accept that concept that you are not the doer. But in case there are doubts, as I say, I suggest personal investigation. You know what I mean by yeah, personal? Yeah, I so personal investigation, which is you investigate one single action which you are sure is your action and come to the conclusion, if I had not had that idea, my action would not have happened and I have no control over the happening of that idea. 
my action would not have happened if I had not happened to be at a certain place at a certain time and seen something or heard something, my action wouldn't have happened. But I had no control over being at this person place and said, and more than something to happen, which I saw or heard. Every time I come to it, it, it goes deeper and deeper. And if I continue that, a crash is likely to happen. I simply cannot be the doer. Now, where the doubt comes here yeah. is that if two genes and preconditioning, and we say that both are not under our control, I'm saying that before genes and preconditioning, here, but before that, yeah. there is karma. Or that right. means if you had, in your past life, no, wait a minute, if your karma was that, there, that's the that karma. would give you the genes of this life. Yes. And that would give you the preconditioning. And karma. And then you would do more karmas. Yes. And more karmas, I'm yes. saying, sir. You are talking, what you have just said, based on my karma. And then it is, sir, I am saying I am not even capable of doing anything. You take my hand and hand on the Either it is your karma or it is not your karma. To so say that it is your karma, life after lifetime, you have, then you can go on to your life. My karma, my karma. I don't, don't believe in this my karma. Why don't they accept it? Why do they you keep grumbling and whining and complaining? Your karma. <laughs> Except it, no, that also they won't do. My karma, your karma, karma, karma. <laughs> and I am saying, basically, thou art the doer, thou art the speaker, thou art the listener. What more detail can, this, can, can, can you be told? Yes, Even a simple thing like talking and listening, I can't do. It will happen. If I accept that, Karma, I, I just throw out the window, you know it. I'm not the doer. I cannot do a karma. One. Two. About your karma. Yes, sir. Who is concerned with this karma? Vishal. Yes, sir. Isn't it right? Yes, sir. So Vishal is told, Vishal did something in a previous birth. Yes, sir. Isn't that right? No, thousands of previous births. Thousands of previous births. So, for thousands of previous births, it was Vishal there in every birth. It has to be because Vishal has done that. The soul is Vishal, no? So the body is not Vishal. Yeah, the, the body, another stupid very soul. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, I... Sorry, sir. Who, I is, no, who is concerned with this life? Yes, sir. Vishal is concerned with his happiness in this life. Are we agreed? Vishal is concerned with his happiness in this life. Yes, sir. And in this life, Vishal Pai, that he has, if he does something, he is free to do whatever he likes. What happens is not in his control. Yes, sir. And therefore, Vishal, therefore most of what is Vishal? Who is Vishal? Mind, body, orgasm. <laughs> I, I, I laugh from my stomach, I'm sorry, but I laugh from my laugh. <laughs> uh, have, you, have you seen an advertisement in the, in the TV? Then you laugh, laugh from your stomach. Yes, sir, I do that. I'm not embarrassed in laughing, sir. I have to, must confess. Yeah. <coughs> so now, most important Vishal is not concerned with the previous life. Yes, sir. Vishal is not concerned with the next life. Yes, sir. Vishal is only concerned with this life. Yes, sir. Why? Who or what is Vishal? Vishal is the ego, sir. Vishal is the ego. And what is the ego? What is the... The feeling of I-ness. Feeling of me. Me. Identified with this body, which is identified consciousness. Yes, sir. Vishal or Ramesh or Sergi is identification with each body, mind, organ and the name as a separate entity. Yes, sir. Only for this life. And that, when did the ego come? The ego did not come. 
when the baby is born. That is clear from experience. A child up to, up to, almost up to the age of two does not think in terms of his personal identity. I've seen that. A child usually thinks in terms of third person when he talks about himself. A child before the ego has taken over yes, thinks right, in sir. terms of third person. Yes, sir, you're right, sir. She doesn't like this. She is afraid of this. Yes, he sir. likes that. Yes, sir. My daughter Jia says Jia likes this. She should the third person. She should, she should talk in third person. She used to. Now she's three. Now she says I, I, me, me. And the moment she came to know I, she must have made you and your wife yeah, absolutely. jump about. Absolutely. I agree on this. <laughs> because when the ego takes over, the ego realizes that the strength of me as the doer. Until then, it's always the third person. She likes it, he doesn't like it, he is afraid. Yes, that's Therefore, true. Therefore, the ego comes only at the age of two or a round about that. That's absolutely true. Not before that. Therefore, the ego identification does not happen with the birth. So something which happened at the age of two, that will end when the body is dead. Therefore, the most important, most important concept that I have is each of us is concerned only with this life. Why? Because Ramesh is only concerned with this life. And therefore, what is Ramesh? Ramesh is impersonal consciousness. Vishal or Sarji is impersonal consciousness, the source. Fundamentally, every ego is the source, or more accurately, the source is every ego, identified with this body, mind, organism, and the name as a separate entity, me. The I, the impersonal consciousness, has become six billion me's, six billion egos. And the ego has to live his life as a separate entity, as the doer of his action, responsible to the society for his action. So as far as I'm concerned, there are only three items, the source, this body-mind organism, and me, who has to live his life. I'm only concerned with three items, the source of God, this body-mind three-dimensional object, and me, and me had been created by the soul, impersonal consciousness, identifying itself with each body as a separate entity. That is the ego. So my very basic simple concept is the ego comes into the picture only at the age of two, two and a half. And when the body dies, the ego is gone. And the identified consciousness loses its identity and again becomes the impersonal consciousness. <coughs> Each life is a separate life. The ego comes into the picture at the age of two or three. When the body is dead, the ego is dead. Therefore, the ego cannot be carried forward from one life to another. On this point, I thought a lot about it. The fact that there are geniuses born in every field, Mozart in music, someone else in something else, there are geniuses born in every field. And there are idiots born in every field. Therefore, it's quite clear to me, something does get carried forward from one birth to another. That is clear. What gets carried forward from one birth to another? Yes, sir. Too difficult a problem I won't even bother to deal with. Okay. My brain is simply not capable, and I'm just not interested. So, wait so, a minute. Yes, sir. Therefore, I'm prepared to accept. Something does get carried forward from one birth to another. I don't care what it is, because one thing I do know <coughs> is 
What does what this carry forward? What this carry forward, I don't know. But what does not get carried forward is me. Ramesh doesn't get carried forward. Ramesh is meant only for this life. <coughs> Therefore, I'm only concerned with my happiness in this life. No question of karma. See what I mean? And I told you, why no karma? The ego comes at the age of two. And when the body is dead, the ego is gone. Why? Because the identification is lost. And the impersonal consciousness again becomes impersonal consciousness. So we just mentioned yes. that we don't know what gets we don't know what gets carried. Yes. Now there could be a million things getting carried, but we don't know, we don't want to ask also. For one reason. I'm I don't get so so could, could one of them be karma, I'm saying. Could one of them be karma? Could mm -hmm. be. Could be, but how am I concerned? Yeah, we're not concerned. I, if I'm not concerned, who cares what karma they still get? And that I agree. And that will be my genes. Somebody is what whatever my genes. Why are my genes what they are? According to God's will, cosmic law. Instead of God's will, cosmic law, you can say karma. But whose karma? Not mine. So I have a lot of faith in the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. And one of the big chunks, you know, of the Bhagavad Gita is on karma. Why I'm saying it is, why? Because such yes, a big chunk is there. Yes, but, but and I, Lord but, Krishna said it. Yes, but a very strong, very strong opinion is that the original Bhagavad Gita was not 18 chapters. It was only five chapters. The, the gist of the Bhagavad Gita. After that, the fallen experts added this as part of the Gita. That is a very, very strong opinion. Therefore, this karma bound that has been added subsequently. But even the Bhagavad Gita says, surely this argument remains, what is karma? Karma <coughs> is an action which happens. <coughs> Not my action. Karma theory is right. Cause and effect. When action happens, it has this result, that has it. Cause and effect. But an action happens by my karma. Not my karma. I can't even do the karma of speaking. I can't do the karma of listening. What karma are we talking about? See what I mean? Right? Stick to the basic concept. Basic concept is... Thou art the doer, thou art the experiencer. Thou art the speaker, thou art. Hang on to that, Vishal. Hang on to that. Why do you want all other concepts? Just to get loaded with concepts. No, so, so, so I can vomit out my other past. <laughs> no. You use new concepts to vomit out the other, new concepts take their place, which you have again to vomit out. Why bother? Yes, sir. See what I mean? Yes, sir. Therefore, basic karma, again, what is karma? Do I do the karma or not? Go to the... No, no, sir, I absolutely agree on this point, that if I am not the doer, then I am not doing the karma. It's a very good point, sir. The peace to my is really good today. I'm, I'm, I'm happy however, today. Then whatever happens happens according to God's will, cosmic law. Because this I didn't think of that if I'm not the doer, which I agree I'm not the doer, then the karma also is not mine. That is the whole point. But the trouble is, Vishal has done thinking and reading and thinking so much that he has forgotten the basics. So it was, it was my destiny, sir, what to do? <laughs> no doubt about it. No doubt about it. It was my preconditioning, but I was just like that. Yes, yeah, but that you came to me. Is destiny. Is also destiny. <laughs> See what I mean? Yes, sir. Basic fact is, basic fact is, who is concerned with what? I am concerned with my life making, having a happy life. Me is Ramesh. Who is Ramesh? <coughs> Ramesh is the impersonal consciousness, the source 
identified with this body and become identified consciousness, the ego. And the identified consciousness, the only three items as I told you. And if we forget the body-mind organism as a three-dimensional object, what remains is the I and the me. Body is a three-dimensional object, only three items. So if we stick to that, what happens? The impersonal consciousness and the identified consciousness, the soul and the ego, and there's such a deep connection between them. But the I, ego is the I, identified with a three-dimensional object. Therefore, the connection between the I and me is really so powerful. It is the basis of life. The basis of life is the connectedness between I and the me. And what happens is, when the me doesn't realize that the me can only be the I, that you can only be the I, she or he can only be the I, <coughs> that understanding just doesn't happen. Even if the understanding happens, then that understanding is only purely intellectual. Yeah. So the purpose of life, normally I would say, I don't care about what purpose of life. Mm-hmm. Purpose of life for me to be happy. Agree. I accept that. So therefore, I am happy with my life. How can, therefore, how can my immediate question, how do I start? I don't care anything. I am concerned with my happiness. Next point. What is happiness for me? Third point, I come to the conclusion that the happiness I am seeking is not to be found in the temporary pleasures of life. They come and go. Therefore, the most important conclusion is the happiness I am seeking is not to be found in the pleasures, and therefore, pursuit of pleasures is the surest way of going away from my happiness. Most important conclusion. Therefore, I must stop pursuing pleasures. Having stopped with a total acceptance, I have to stop pleasures. Now, that is another important. It doesn't mean. That again is a misconception. <coughs> the, 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 the Buddha, the, the, uh, the self realized man. He just pay pleasure and pay the same thing. A rubbish. Ram Krishna Paramahamsa, or Buddha, or immediately he didn't enjoy the pleasure of a good meal? Of course they did. Therefore, the understanding is pleasure is not to be, the happiness I'm seeking is not to be found in the pleasure. That doesn't mean if a pleasure happens, I don't enjoy the pleasure. I don't get attached to it. I don't. You don't pursue that <coughs> pleasure. Pleasure I enjoy. You accept it because it's the will of God. You accept the pleasure, so but don't pursue it. But every body, mind, all had preferences. You prefer one kind of food, I prefer somebody. You prefer one color, I prefer another color. Sorry. You know, I went to my, well, my, my dentist and I saw a board. Switch off your mobile when you are under treatment. <laughs> so far, I haven't had to put Sir, but this is, this is an operation, sir. Sorry? This is an operation. What is an operation? This. It is. The satsang is an operation, not treatment, sir. <laughs> I know, but what I'm saying is so far, I have been able to accept that this is a satsang, but I only hope that I am not forced to turn that into an operation, <laughs> not operation, treatment. 
Anyway, <laughs> so the most important thing is basically what do I want? I be, you see, I begin with the most practical thing. Ultimately, who is concerned with what? I'm concerned with my happiness. So I have to find out what will make me happy. The newborn baby seeks his mother's breast intuitively, doing what? Seeking happiness. At that moment, for the baby, mother's milk is the happiness. As the baby grows up, just some baby, some adults think money will bring them happiness. They see, they continue pleasure. So most people seek pleasures in life. Money in order to buy the pleasures in life. Most people don't get it. They die. They die a frustrated life. According to God's will, they destiny. And among those, some do get what they want, but realize deeply that they have money. They can enjoy almost good health to enjoy any pleasures in life, and yet. They have strongly felt that they have not got the happiness they are seeking. That is one of us. So at that point, the realization is, what I have been seeking is I will see pursuing pleasure. I have got the pleasures, of, but it is the pleasures of life have not been made but the happiness. Therefore, what is the happiness I am seeking? The happiness I am seeking has to be there for not what the life brings, but my attitude towards life. My attitude towards life means my attitude towards the other. Morning till evening. What is daily living? My relationship with the other, the other may be my wife or son or a close relative or a neighbor or someone connected with my profession or, or some much total stranger. From morning to night, who the other is going to be at what time, no one has any control. And unless my relationship with the other is harmonious, I can't have the happiness I want. But and therefore the happiness I want truly is nothing more than peace of mind. You said you felt comfortable. I asked you, what do you mean? comfortable with yourself. Therefore, the ultimate happiness is peace of mind. And what is peace of mind? <coughs> Not to be uncomfortable with myself. Not to be comfortable with myself. Two things. One is what I call, what makes me uncomfortable with myself? Thirdly, my conscience. Isn't it right? What makes me uncomfortable with myself is my conscience. I've been doing something which I shouldn't have done. I've been hurting people which I shouldn't have done. That is conscience, based on my doing. But if I'm able to accept totally, I'm not the doer. Then promptly, I don't have to worry about my conscience. I tell my conscience, you are not the doer. You are just a witness of whatever is happening. The moment I accept I am not the doer, I throw away my conscience. See? So, what am I seeking? A harmonious relationship with the other. And I come to the country. The only way I can have a harmonious relationship with the other is if I am able to accept totally this basic concept of every religion, thy will be done. Thou art the speaker, thou art the listener. If I am able to accept that basically, then I am able to accept totally. I am not the doer. If I am not the doer, you are not the doer. If I am not the doer, then you are not the doer. I don't have to hate myself for hurting others. I don't have to hate the others for hurting me. And that is the concept 
which brings me the happiness, which is peace of mind. Peace of mind, never to be uncomfortable with myself. Therefore, what am I saying? What am I saying, Sergeant? What I'm saying is, again, in these two items, the only way this me, this ego, can have the happiness it is seeking, if it is constantly connected with that, I'm not the doer. The moment I accept totally I'm not the doer. I'm constantly connected with, with the thought. You have this feeling of connection? Very strongly. I'm, co I'm always connected with the source. I'm never disconnected with the source. So my basic concept is the purpose of life is for the identified me never to forget that I am basically the source identified with this object as a separate entity so that life can happen. So with the total acceptance that I'm not the doer, no one is a doer. I feel, strongly feel, my connection with the source, my connection with God, if you like. Therefore, my point is, the very essence of daily living is for that me, which is connected to the source, to realize that it is always the source functioning through all the body, mind, organism. No one is a doer. The moment it, then the original, original connection between the I and the me is established. The original connection between the I and the me was lost. Why? Why was the original connection between the I and me lost? Why was it broken? It was broken because the me considers himself the doer of the thing, considers himself me as the subject of the other objects. In dealing with the other, me and the other become subject-object relationship. Subject-object relationship means the whole mind got divided into a split mind. Split mind of subject-object. I'm the subject, you are the object. You are the subject, I'm your object. So the moment the mind got disturbed into split mind of subject and object, me and the other, the connection was broken. In other words, the moment the me got involved in daily living as the doer of his action and considered the other the doer of his action, my connection with the source broke. So the only way I can get my happiness back is for me to have that connection restored. And the moment I accept, no one is a doer, neither me nor the other. I'm back again, connected to the source. May I add to this something? I'm sorry? Can I add to this word? Me! Uh, what you said, I, uh, this is exactly what I'm looking for, is this connection. I, I had experiences in my life when I felt that connection very strongly. Of course. But in those moments, there was no I, there was no me. So I even, uh, it wasn't like uh, difficult to talk, I tried, but uh, yeah. even yeah. if I tried, yeah. there was no me. Yes, yeah, so I you have the experience. So there is, wait a minute, you're talking of an experience. Then the, uh, the me was not there. Was not there. So it's, it's, right. it's uh, wait wrong wait 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 <coughs> You are talking about the time during the experience. When the me was not there, yeah. and therefore everything became the I. Yeah. Agree. So it's just a way of talking that me and. But wait a But in living his daily life, who has to live his daily life? The me has to live his daily life. That is why too much importance is given to these experiences of no me, and people go about now with that. Nobody home, nobody home. If nobody home, who the hell is living his life? Nobody home. No, action still happens, but there is... Uh, but nobody home. No, there is. 
That is what I'm Nobody home is wrong. Wrong. There is strong feeling the of me presence. The me is still there. Yeah. Therefore, my point is, so long as this me is living his life as a me, the me is still there. The maximum the me can have. If a me wants all the time, I want to be the I. I want to give up this, I want to be the I. I want to be identified with the I. Misery, frustration. Yeah. Why? Because as long as the body, mind, organism is alive, the maximum I can have as a separate entity, as the ego, the maximum I can have is to be connected with the soul. So long as this body is alive, the me is there and the connection is there. The moment the body dies, there's no more need of a connection. The ego is no longer there. As soon as the ego is created, there is a connection between the me and the I, and the purpose of life is to keep that connection intact. And the only way that connection between me and I can be kept alive is if I'm able to accept those, nobody can go up. Then the, my point is, in life, the maximum spiritually, the maximum any separate entity can have is not the experience of oneness, but the experience of being connected all the time with the soul. See what I mean? Experience of oneness is a free sample, which, which everybody enjoys every day in his deep sleep. But the moment you wake up and life begins, all you can have is the feeling of being connected to the soul. This is so important and I'm astonished. You don't find this anywhere else. This is the basic thing. The human being, the seeker, millions of millions of seekers, all over the must have, frustrated because they've had this experience of oneness and never been able to have maintained that throughout the day. You can't. See what I mean? How can there be an experience of oneness when you're living your life? The maximum experience, the maximum spiritual experience anybody can have is to have the connection with the source solidly unbroken. That is the maximum an ego can hope to have. Okay. See what I mean? Therefore, the purpose of life is to maintain unbroken the connection between me and this, me and the I, me and the soul. Me can never ever become the I. Tremendous frustration with this is not realized. Me is fundamentally I, yeah. But the me has been made for this life, so until the life is there, me can never be I. Me can only be connected to the I. Therefore, a me wanting to be I is she asking for frustration. I repeat, the me can never be the I. The river, so long as it's a river, cannot be this ocean. The river can become the ocean, when the ocean but the river still flows. The shadow cannot be the be the substance. <coughs> Shadow can be the substance, only when the substance, you come into the, uh, away from the sun, no shadow. But so long as the, you are in the, sh in the sun, the shadow can't want to be you. The shadow has to be there. Therefore, so long as you are in the sun, the shadow has to be there. So long as I have to live my life, the me can never be I. The maximum spiritually I can have is to accept totally. I'm fully connected with this soul. That's the maximum spiritual spiritual well-being I can have. I can never 
me as me, I can never become the I. Me can only, the maximum he can have is to feel strongly the connection with the I. Okay? Yes, Visha, what about your ten percent? <laughs> Isn't that dissolving? <coughs> so slowly, but it will, sir. Yes. So, any question? Please. I bet you may, you may, Yes, yes, about the harmonious uh, relationship with the others. Yes. Um, harmonious relationship with the other. Yes. Yeah. Um, what is the basis of that? This is what I was... Um, because the doubt that comes when you were saying that uh, what we are... No, wait a minute. Doubt comes because the basis is not understood. Mm -hmm. What is the basis of the harmonious relationship between me and the other, whoever the other is. Well, I guess... Uh, what is the basis of a harmonious relationship which I do have with the other, whoever the other is? What is the basis of that to the harmonious relationship? Very simple, uh, Virginia. Mm -hmm. I am connected to the source, you are also connected to the soul. Therefore, I have a harmonious relationship with you. Every other is connected with the soul. Just as I am connected to the soul. The total acceptance. Every single individual ego is connected to the soul. He doesn't realize it, therefore he doesn't have, or she doesn't have, a harmonious relationship with me. But I have a harmonious relationship with you because my total acceptance is you are connected with the soul, I am also connected with the soul. That is the basis of a harmonious relationship. So uh, when you were explaining uh, that through the life, no, what we, what we are searching since the very beginning in life is happiness, no? Always. Only. Beginning with the, with the newborn baby, Mm -hmm. Seeking his mother's best for happiness. At that moment, happiness for the baby was mother's milk. So my question arises yes. when you say uh, that we search in uh, daily life, like work or relation, like rela like a partner relationship or succeed in life. Isn't it? My my doubt comes. <coughs> isn't it also? the harmonious relationship with others, another kind of uh, seeking the pleasure. Do you understand what I'm asking? No, try again. Yes. <laughs> so, you were saying <coughs> that in daily life what we search is for pleasure, no? Yeah. Either with work or succeed, yeah. whatever. So my question is, yes. isn't it also the harmonious, harmonious relationship with the others a, nope. a source of happiness? No. Nope. No? Uh -huh. Aha. That fact, was my point. In fact, what happens here, yes. Virginia has a wonderful relationship with a partner. I don't have, but uh, it's <laughs> good. <laughs> and therefore, Virginia says, I'm, I'm happy. I've got happiness. Isn't that what you're saying? You have a harmonious relationship with your partner. Yes, sir. Therefore, yes. surely I'm happy. Uh -huh. Isn't that what you're saying? So what I'm saying is you're confusing the pleasure you have with your partner as happiness. That pleasure can certainly change to pain if, you, if there's a parting. Yeah. The pleasure in the partnership turns into pain, then the partnership breaks. Yes. So it's both pleasure and pain in daily living. Totally different from the happiness which you're seeking. Which is not in the, in the, in the, in the flow of life, but in our the relationship with the other, whoever the other. Mm, 
still I don't get so clear uh, because what you said uh, since the Let day me put it this way. The conclusion I come to is yes. the happiness I want I cannot have until I stop pursuing pleasure. Okay. The happiness I really want I cannot have so long as I keep pursuing pleasure, one form or another. Only when I stop pursuing pleasure, enjoy the pleasure when it comes. But when the pleasure does not come, I do not pursue that pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Such a big step, huh? Not pursuing really pleasure. Big step, yeah. Such a big one. It's a big step. It's a big step which Virginia will be able to take only if she's supposed to. Her destiny goes to God. But don't I mean no need to be pessimistic. No, 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 no. That you are here. That you are here seeking happiness, listening to the rubbish I'm telling you. That is a big argument. So if God has brought you so far, why do you think he will drop you in between? Ah, uh, no, huh? <laughs> I hope he holds me. <laughs> therefore, therefore, why should you think your glass is half empty? Consider it half full and enjoy the half fullness. Mm -hmm. But really it's so simple. Even there, even seeking the, the enlightenment, can be so harmful. Seeking enlightenment, unless I really have and I have this basic understanding, seeking enlightenment, ask anybody, what do you expect to have? To be one with God. Ask anybody. Yes. What is enlightenment? I am no longer a man, I'll become one with God. That is not enlightenment. So long as you have to live your life, <coughs> you cannot be one with God. So long as you have to live your life, you can only live your life being connected to God, not being God. Yes. That is the most important. I repeat, being God is impossible in life. Only after death will you be one, only with after death you will be, but after death you will not be there to be one with God. Therefore in this life the maximum you can hope to have is to be connected with God and feel that connection with God. And this is what you were referring about the harmonious relationship with others that is that each one of us is connected with the source. And if Not I have that, therefore I have a harmonious relationship with you. Bali. But if you don't have that, okay. then you don't have a harmonious relationship with me. <laughs> So the harmonious relationship which I have with any other depends only on the total acceptance that I am connected to the, to the source, God, and everybody else is also connected to the God. Okay? Yes. Please, uh, take. <laughs> So in that case for you, the, you can say the pleasure, uh, for you the pleasure becomes a happiness and for no, say pleasure no, is still no, the pleasure. No, the pleasure I enjoy, I still enjoy as pleasure. But because I don't consider it happiness, I don't pursue that pleasure if it is not there. Yeah. Because if some of you consider that pleasure as happiness, therefore if the pleasure is not there, you pursue it. Yeah, but in the, in, in the opposite, it's uh, uh, natural to pursue, but in your case you won't pursue, because for you the pleasure is the happiness, like, because it comes from no, the source. Yeah. For me it's because I've got the total acceptance yeah. that the happiness I'm seeking is not the pleasure in life. But even if it comes, it's happiness. If it comes, I in, in the relationship, yeah. If I, uh, it comes, I am, but I do not force myself, I do not pursue it. Only the source can bring you happiness. I'm sorry? Like uh, only the source can bring you happiness. 
Yes. Being connected with the soul is the ultimate happiness I'm seeking. Okay, so when, when you say what does not carry uh, in one uh, birth to another birth is yeah. I, which is, no, which is we are sure about is, it. Which is the, the ego. The ego. But you are very sure about it. I mean, what you say. Uh, now, that way if I say uh, I am uh, this ego in, in my living, uh, this thing, from yesterday to today, from moment to moment, yes. even that, in that case it not uh, sure. carries. carries. It doesn't carry, ego doesn't carry. You know, that's why this no thinking mind and no, no this karma theory is not, doesn't stand there. I lived my life yesterday, I live my life today, and tomorrow, so if I'm alive, I shall live my life. So maybe the question of day to day. Okay. Daily living means from day to day. But uh, because this thinking mind doesn't stand, and uh, this... Uh, Karma doesn't stand in day to day. No. Karma and two separate concepts. I'm the doer or I'm not the doer. In, in daily living, is my, I use my working mind or thinking, or let my thinking mind. But wha I, how I see, see, see the, the thinking mind is, gives a continuity from you know yesterday's to today to this uh, ego. And that's why there is a thinking mind. No, it is not the thinking mind. It is not the thing, but this continuity is mine. The me itself is the continuity. The me is the continuity. There is a dis uh, distinction between thinking mind and working mind doesn't apply. Two totally different concepts. Yamuti, any question, anybody?
ओंकारस्वूप सद्गुरो समर्थ अनाथ चनाथ तुझ नमो तुझ नमो तुझ नमो तुझ नमो तुझ नमो सद्गुराय आनंद सागर तैलोक्य आधार गुरुराव तैलोक्य आधार गुरुराव तैलोक्य आधार गुरुराव गुरुराज स्वामी हसे स्वयं प्रकाश क्या फुड़े उदास चंद्र रवि क्या फुड़े उदास चंद्र रवि क्या फुड़े उदास चंद्र रवि रवि शशि अग्नि नीनतीज रूपा स्वप्रकाश रूपा नीने वेदा स्वप्रकाश रूपा नीने वेदा स्वप्रकाश रूपा तुझ नमो तुझ नमो ओंकार स्वरूप सद्गुरु समर्था अनाथांचनाथ तुझ नमो तुझ नमो तुझ नमो तुझ नमो तुझ नमो एक जनार्दनी गुरु पर ब्रह्मा एक जनार्दनी गुरु पर ब्रह्मा दया जे परिणाम सदा मुखी दया जे परिणाम सदा मुखी दया जे परिणाम सदा मुखी ओंकार स्वरूप सद्गुरु समर्था अनाथांचनाथ तुझ नमो 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 सगुण मनो के निर्गुण रे तुझ सगुण मनो के निर्गुण रे सगुण निर्गुण एक गोविंद रे एक गोविंद रे तुझ सगुण मनो के निर्गुण रे तुझ सगुण मनो के निर्गुण रे अनुमाने ना अनुमाने ना श्रुति ने ति ने ति मरते गोविंद रे श्रुति ने ति ने ति मरते गोविंद रे तुझा सगुण मनो के निर्गुण रे तुझा सगुण मनो के निर्गुण रे तुझा कि अदृश्य रे तुझा दृश्य मनो के अदृश्य रे दृश्य अदृश्य एक गोविंद रे दृश्य अदृश्य एक गोविंद रे तुझा सगुण मनो के निर्गुण रे तुझा सगुण मनो के निर्गुण रे तुझा आकार मनो के निराकार रे तुझा आकार मनो के निराकार रे आकार निराकार एक गोविंद रे 
akaru nirakaru ek govindu re tu jai sagunamano ke nirguna re tu jai sagunamano ke nirguna re tu jai stulamano ke sukshma re tu jai stulamano ke sukshma re निवृत्ति प्रसाद ज्ञान देव बोले ज्ञान देव बोले बापर कुमार देवी वो विठल रे निवृत्ति प्रसाद ज्ञान देव बोले बाप रखुआ देवी मारु विठल रे तुझ सब रमनो के निर्गुण रे तुझ सब रमनो के निर्गुण रे सगुण निर्गुण एक गोविंद रे एक गोविंद रे तुझ सब रमनो के निर्गुण रे तुझ दान दे देवा तुझ विसर न वावा विसर न वावा तुझ विसर न वावा हे जी दान दे देवा तुझ विसर न वावा विसर न वावा तुझ विसर न वावा गुण गायन आवड़ी हे छे माझे सर्व जोडी माझे सर्व जोडी हे छे माझे सर्व जोडी न लगे मुक्ति दान संपदा न लगे मुक्ति दान संपदा संत संग दे सदा संत संग दे सदा संत संग दे गुण गायन आवड़ी हे ची माझे सर्व जोड़ी माझे सर्व जोड़ी हे ची माझे सर्व जोड़ी हे ची दान देव देवा तुझ विसर न वावा विसर न वावा तुझ विसर न वावा हे ची दान देव देवा तुझ विसर न वावा विसर न वावा तचित्तिराहो मुखे तुझे नामा तुझे वो पचतीरा हो मुखे तुझे नामा देह प्रपंच चादास सुखे करो कामा सुखे करो कामा तुझे वो पचतीरा हो मुखे तुझे नाम देहादार जो जो त्याचे विहित नित्य कर्म सदाचार संमार्गाचं आगरान दर्म देहादार जो जो त्याचे विहित नित्य कर्म चलाचार संमार्गाचा आगरान दर्मा तुला आवडे ते हाते गड़े नित्य कर्मा तुला आवडे ते हाते गड़े नित्य कर्मा देह प्रपंचा चादास 
सुखे कर काम सुखे कर तुझा पदेवा हे लाम देह भाव सारा उड़े अंतरा आत्मा सोन में पसारा तुझा पदेवा हे लामे देह भाव सारा उड़े अंतरा आत्मा सोन में पसारा नाम तुझे गे तो गोरा नाम तुझे गे तो गोरा भोगनी निष्काम नाम तुझे गे तो गोरा भोगनी निष्काम देह प्रपंचाचा दास करो काम तुझे रूप चित्रा हो मुखे तुझे नाम तुझे रूप चित्रा हो मुखे तुझे नाम Thank you. 